Hey, good morning, everybody. It is about 8.13. And I know it says talking about um, WWE, especially after last night, it basically says uh, news items or news items coming out of Raw last night. And I will admit, I know a lot of you are going to say this when I talk about this. I know a lot of you are going to say after watching this, you're going to comment and say, well, Brian, you didn't watch Raw last night. How can you comment on it? Well, it's a funny thing how iPods, computers, and YouTube come in handy, if you know what I mean. Anyway, talking about Raw, I did read up, as well as catch up through YouTube and the iPod and the computer, on exactly some new newsworthy items from last night. First of all, um, let's talk about, of course, the whole CM Punk situation going with Ryback. Uh, it appears that, with the exception of maybe the heels, or a few heels, uh, CM Punk is looked at as almost an outsider, if you will. In other words, it's like, hey, you don't want to go by the w do things the WWE way, then you're an outsider. From what I understand, this Level Jack match kind of proved. Now, I will probably record Raw later on, because I get it through Hula and Hulu, so I might do that later. But also another newsworthy item coming out of this as well is the fact that John Cena apparently is clear to wrestle. Now, they're still up to debate of exactly what his role will be this Sunday. But it seems right now to keep him out of the WWE title picture, they're probably setting him up for a feud with Dolph Ziggler. That's the way I read it. Because apparently one of the news items coming out of there last night is AJ Lee, storyline-wise, has resigned as the general manager of Raw, and in her place, Vicky Guerrero was named as managing supervisor. Now, managing supervisor, in case some of you don't know, is, a, is somebody that supervises management. And it's like, if somebody is named the general manager, then Vicky will be like a supervisor. In other, in other words, an assistant to that person. They will supervise what the general manager does, and then probably help them out. But that's basically what, uh, that's what I think a managing supervisor is from my experience in working. Because I've been a manager, uh, breakfast manager, you know, uh, opening manager, stuff like that at Burger King a few times. So I kind of have an idea of what a managing supervisor is. I mean, here's the thing. A supervisor is maybe a little above you, but not as much. Basically equal ground, but they, well, it's something like that. Maybe some of you know what it, what it is better, better than I do. But, one thing I did do, I did see the uh, Raw review from the Off the Rope show, a.k.a. Can't Heat, last night. And, apparently, Mike Rout kind of has a little bit of the situation, kind of an idea of what's going on. I mean, we've been hearing reports on and off that AJ and Booker were going to be let go, storyline-wise, as the GMs. Well, it seems that... They dropped that. They nixed that, but yet they did the resigning of AJ. Now, here's what I think Mr. Rout, Mike Rout, on the Off the Rope show was getting at. When he says, no, we haven't seen the last of this AJ storyline thing with Vicky, it basically means that AJ may be reinstated storyline wise as the general manager once the situation is over. Now, you're probably wondering why this storyline is going on now with Vicky and it involves John and probably Dolph. Well, it's real simple. Vicky Guerrero, storyline wise, in case you don't know, her and Dolph for weeks have been teasing that he's going to cash in at Hell in a Cell and become World Heavyweight Champion. Now, here, here's, the, now here's the alternative to that. Here's the alternative because this has happened before. This has happened before. Remember, a few years ago, when Vicky was in charge of SmackDown, or in charge of Raw, I believe. I think one of them. She still had an association with Edge, storyline-wise. So what did Edge do with that association? He attacked Kofi Kingston before the Raw WWE Championship match, or the Raw Championship match, in the Elimination Chamber, took his place and walked out the champion. He loses the championship at the beginning of the evening, and it walks out probably near the end of the evening as 
the champion of the other brand. So, you might say to yourself, well, what does that have to do with Vicky? Think about it. Vicky's association with Dolph. Some people have even commented about it on LawrenceofPain.net. Some people have commented that they could do something storyline-wise where Vicky creates a loophole with, through her position that she's in, creates a loophole and allows Dolph Ziggler to cash in not on the world champion, but on the WWE champion. Think about that. You're always wondering exactly how they could get CM Punk to lose or Ryback to lose without... Okay, here's the thing. You're thinking, how can they get CM Punk to lose the match? Match. Well, there's your answer. Have Dolph cash in on him or Ryback. Makes it simple as that. Because if they go the other route, which if they do, they, if they, do, they, they will. But if they go that other route, Again, it goes back to what I said in my video where I did a response to, to the question of if Ryback's ready for the main event as well as Ziggler. It was a money, Ziggler's Money in the Bank situation. It's like I said in that video, I have this uneasy feeling in my stomach that he's going to end up being the second uh, superstar this year along with Cena to not successfully cash in his briefcase. I mean, this is what I see. He's going to cash in, as soon as that bell rings, he's either going to get a WMD or he's going to get a broke kick and that's it. End of story. I'm sorry, but that's the way I see it. Because if you think WWE, and, I, and I'm a fan of Cena's, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of John Cena's. But do you think, honestly, in all truthfulness, WWE will let the poster boy, the franchise player, be the only one not to cash in? No. Not possible. So that's why I feel that, that's why I feel, and I'm in agreement with some others, that Dolph Zig, they might create a loophole for Ziggler through the Vicky Guerrero managing supervisor position she has now, storyline wise. They may have Vicky create a loophole that allows Dolph Ziggler to say, okay, I'm going to cash in on the WWE Champion. In other words, loophole-wise, have them revise the contract in the briefcase, but make it for the WWE title. See what I'm saying? I know that probably is a little confusing. You're probably a little confused by that, and I apologize. But, but here's the thing. I believe that could happen, and that's the reason for this. And that's the reason why you have this situation right now with John Cena, AJ, and Vicky. Storyline wise going on. Yeah, John's still going to play a huge part with CM Punk and Ryback. But, storyline wise, you got to give John Cena something until CM Punk is ready to face him again or he faces, or Ryback faces him. You got to give him something for him to, you know, basically get himself back into shape, you know, ready to go. Because apparently they don't want to they want to take it easy with him right now, but if you want to get him back into ring shape, back into action, hey, I don't see any better opponent for him to try that with than Dolph, honestly. And you want to give Dolph a big rub, even in a losing effort, put him in a match at Hell in a Cell or whatever against John Cena with huge stipulations. And that's what I feel could happen. I feel this is going to lead to a Cena-Ziggler match, where if Cena wins, AJ gets her job back, but if Cena loses, Vicky remains the general manager. Now, the only good thing from what we understand, storyline-wise, is, is it, it's likely to be an interim chip. In other words, it's not a permanent position for Vicky. It's just until they find somebody they, that will not end up being kind of like in the position of AJ. But I think because Vince McMahon is so high on AJ, they're going to give her back that job title. But, I've got a feeling it's going to be done through her, through John Cena most possibly, trying to win it back for her in a match. Hey, maybe even a mixed tag match for what we know. It would be John and AJ against Ziggler and Vicky. Now again, now, now I know, now speaking of Vicky being a managing supervisor, I know a lot of people are not happy about her being back in charge again. But you've got to understand this. I think the reason they did this is for a temporary situation. 
You see, you had a, it was a temporary situation, but also a balancing situation. You see, when you had AJ and Booker as general managers, you basically had babyface general managers on two shows, in charge of two shows. To balance it out in the WWE terms, you kind of have a babyface and a heel. And that usually works out. It usually works out, out better. Now, what I see with Vicky's position, though, is she'll probably be in the same position as Eve. Eve's the assistant to Booker T, but when she's on Raw, she's a competitor. When she's on SmackDown, she's not. And I think, possibly, that's going to be the same thing with Ziggler. I mean, not Ziggler, but Vicky as well, possibly. That while she's on Raw, she's the, she's the boss for right now, until they name somebody else. She's in charge. She's got the stroke. But when she's on SmackDown with Ziggler, it's like... Forget it. But you know what? Then again, but you know what? This might even be good for Ziggler because it'll allow him to move on maybe to somebody else. Now, speaking of Eve, because it seemed last night was a, a night of the divas, if you will, because you had AJ kind of reignite this feud she's going to have with Vicky, basically going back into a crazy look kind of deal after Vicky tried to humiliate her. She was like, when I said I had this look, like, turn around, BAM! <laughs> you know? But besides that, it seems we're finally probably going to get some closure down the line to this whole Eve, Caitlyn, Layla deal. Now, Mr. Rout did bring up a good uh, a suggestion. If you're going to create a feud or develop a storyline with your divas, you need to create it. You need to create it on your flagship show, which is Monday Night Raw. They're not doing that. They are. And this backstage segment, to me, from what I saw on YouTube, helped do that. And it seems that we may finally have maybe a clue as to who was also responsible for AJ's removal. But, but we'll get to that when that possibly reveals itself. But here's what I see, but here's what we got developing out of this storyline between Eve, Caitlyn, and, and Layla. It seems, if you watch SmackDown this past Friday, and I caught some glimpses of it, Eve left her iPad basically after she kind of told... I mean, because here's the thing. Obviously, Eve was probably spying on, on Teddy's storyline where I was going, hmm, that's a good idea. I'll just give it to Booker, even though it was Teddy's idea, for that lumberjack match or whatever you call it, right? Well, here's the thing. Eve, after she was escorting Booker, or accompanying Booker to a meeting, left her iPad down. She put her iPad down like that. Teddy looked at it, turned it on, looked at it, saw what was, probably saw something storyline-wise. So here's what happens, in case some of you don't know. Eve's on the phone. She's on the phone with somebody saying, oh, I've heard about this. Oh, oh and it's not just Zack Ryder and all, and John Cena and all that, but... You know, it's, you know, and she's going like, well, it's not just, you know, Kane and CM Punk and John Cena, but it's also been people like Zack Ryder and Primo even, and uh, basically making up stuff, right? And here you have Caitlyn in the back. He finally notices her, asks her what she wants, and basically Caitlyn confronts her again about the situation. Eve tries to play it off like saying, hey, look, I don't know how many times I have to tell you I'm not involved. And then, and then Caitlyn's like, hey, I got an email from your iPad with this. I got a picture from your iPad. I got a picture of your iPad with a blonde wig. Basically, basically what Eve said, basically what Caitlin was saying is that somebody, and I think we know who, took a picture of uh, Eve's iPad with a picture of the blonde wig that she's been accused of on the iPad. Now, Obviously, Eve is upset about this, says she's going to go to Booker about it. And then Caitlyn, she's like this. I mean, Eve's upset, she's walking away, like, and then Caitlyn just grabs her like this by the arm and says, cut the nice girl act. In other words, she says, in other words, she's telling her, stop pretending to be nice. You ain't fooling nobody. And basically says, and tells her, in a peachy sort of way, you always are, you always have been and always will be the same manipulative, conniving witch you always have been. And basically this 
And by saying that to her, this causes her to slap Eve to take her glasses off and slap Caitlyn right across the face. And they start brawling. Layla comes in asking Eve what she's doing to Caitlyn. Eve basically, you know, bitch slaps Layla. And Layla's like, oh, hell no, no, you didn't. So, apparently they're going to develop this even more so on SmackDown. But it seems, from what I saw, and I'm sure a lot of you did, you know, saw... It seems they might be finally bringing some closure to that, so that's pretty good. Another developing story last night as well is Justin Gabriel, who I have is one of my personal favorites, and I have said, I said, and I said, I said it right here, standing right here, I said this. I said this myself, and I'm sure there's a video of it. Justin Gabriel, to me, is one of those guys that needs to break out. He's one of those guys that give him the ball, let him run with it, and he can break that glass ceiling. And last night may have seemed to be the first step to it, as he got a clean, non-title victory over Antonio Cesaro. Now, what does this mean? Well, this obviously means, from what I read on LordsOfPain.net, Justin may be in line for a singles push, finally. And this is after he's experienced... 12 losses on TV and pay-per-view? And you're probably wondering, why now? Well, the way I look at it is I think what they do with people like Justin is they have them lose a certain amount of matches before they finally say, okay, you're ready. You're ready to take that next step. I mean, look who they had Kofi beat last night or facing beat last night on Raw. Michael McGillicuddy. When was the last time you saw him on Raw? Long time, right? I mean, you mostly see him on Saturday Morning Slam, Superstars, NXT. You haven't seen him on Raw in a while, have you? Now look. The point, or main event, that's another one. But now look, he's on Raw, first time in a long time. So it tells you they're finally getting some of these younger guys out there and finally saying, you know what? We need to give these guys the exposure. We need to give these guys opportunities because we can't keep having the same people over and over again. And I think that's what they're doing with Justin, finally, hopefully. Now, will this lead to a championship match on the pre-show this Sunday or on the pay-per-view? Can't really say. But I'm happy with the fact that they are finally giving someone like Justin Gabriel, who have I always looked at as, as a potential glass breaker, if you will, someone that needs that opportunity to break that glass ceiling as somebody, you know, that can, as somebody that giving the ball can score multiple times over. So, again, am I happy about that? Yes. And it seems to be something developing there in the future. Again, though, to recap what's going on, it seems the major storylines coming out of this, it seems CM Punk may be looked at as an outsider now, but it goes to the, the locker room, storyline wise. Vicky Guerrero is the new managing supervisor in place, temporarily, temporarily in place, of AJ, who has resigned as general manager, but I don't think for that, I don't think for that long. Which, again, I believe is going to involve a matchup where it's either going to be Cena versus Ziggler, or it's going to be a mixed tag. will be Cena and AJ against Vicky and Dolph. That's what I see. With possibly AJ's job on the line. Or AJ's chance of being general manager again on the line. That's what I feel could happen. As well as the discriminating evidence, which I also feel will come back to bite, storyline-wise, Vicky in the butt, if you know what I mean. I also see perhaps, possibly, you know, as long as she's the managing supervisor, her creating storyline-wise, a loophole and revising the contract that's in the briefcase Dolph has to allow him to try to cash in on the WWE Champion and become WWE Champion. That could happen as well, developing out of that story, that news item. As well as we also probably are getting closer to some closure to this whole Eve, Caitlyn, Layla situation involving who attacked Caitlyn or not at Hell in the Cell. I mean, not Hell in the Cell, but at Night of Champions. But, that's as far as we know. Oh yeah, also, uh, it seems Road Scholars won the, uh, the finals last night, and they will face Team Hell No. Now the question is, will they walk out? Well, with the tag titles? I don't think so. 
I think because you're putting too much stock in Team Hell No right now, Kane and Daniel Bryan, I don't think it's possible. But we'll see what happens. But again, the the major, but again, the ones I'm focusing on, newsworthy, the news items coming out last night, AJ's resigning, resigning as general manager temporarily, in my view, with Vicky being named managing supervisor, managing supervisor of Raw temporarily, which could create storyline rise of loophole for her, for Dolph Ziggler to use to cash in his briefcase, not on the world champion, but the WWE champion. Uh, with the possibility that John Cena will face Ziggler to, in a match to get AJ's job back, or it might be a mixed tag match t situation. Um, also, like I said, closure finally, probably coming very soon to the Eve, Caitlin, Layla situation. And also, CM Punk is looked at as a bit of an outsider, as well as finally Justin Gabriel, one of the superstars, young superstars I felt has a bright future in that company, needs that opportunity to be given the ball and run with it and try to break that glass ceiling and go to that next level and be the future, one of the future, future franchise players of that company. You know, seems to have started last night, may have started last night, with his clean uh, victory over Antonio Cesaro, the United States champion. Now, would it lead to a title match? We don't know. But those are the newsworthy items I look at and my thoughts on them. Uh, what are your thoughts on these newsworthy items, if you will, these news items coming out of last night's Raw? Again, I know it's hard for me to say because I didn't watch Raw, but I will record it, hopefully courtesy of Hula Plus, tonight or later today. But those are just my thoughts on it. Tell me what you guys think. What do you feel? Do you think, do you agree with what I said here, or do you have other opinions. Let me know down below. Comment, video response if you like. I'll talk to you all later.